because I started to look at Carlos a little differently over the years that you know maybe he was not this monster they made him out to be um, and you know I started to see him more as a, as a human being and I didn't want to see him put to death um, and so he did end up calling me I guess it was just about an hour or two before his execution and um, he told me that that I, I was his last phone call and you can imagine getting that call, getting that phone call from him and um, you're thinking this man is about to die, why did you choose me as the last person to talk to aside from the people that obviously you'll, you'll be around right there. I gave him the opportunity, um, I guess ever the journalist um, I gave him the opportunity to, to, to say anything that he wanted to say, perhaps to get it off his chest. If he wanted to admit that, you know, maybe after all this time, yeah, I did commit this crime. I said, Carlos, is there anything you want to tell me? Do you want to tell me anything about what really happened? He said, no. He said, Karen, they're putting to death an innocent man. And then it, I think at that point it really hit me that maybe they were because he had nothing to lose at this point. You know, maybe get it off his chest and tell one human being. Again, you know, he had the perfect opportunity to sort of cleanse his soul and tell somebody, get it off his chest. And, um, you know, I, I might have been the perfect person, person for that, and that didn't happen. Um, and I asked him. So I don't think he had anything to tell me other than what he told me. Um, there was nothing to admit to. And um, I believe that. If we put to death one innocent man, then what's the point? I mean, you can put him away for life, but um, you can't say, oops, we goofed. Um, after someone's been put to death. 